what we're showing off today, I think, is a really remarkable um, uh, new piece of technology. Uh, the problem that we were kind of addressing um, is looking for a fully mobile, uh, cloud-based, mobile, automated document um, platform Muted. that is also scalable and um, will grow um, not only with us, but unmuted. And uh, we'll get into some of that uh, uh, smart uh, Muted. intelligence that goes along with it. But um, first things first, just uh, we wanted to, to show off a little bit, get our hands in it, get your hands into it, um, the, the mobile um, automated document platform. So with that, um, I'll let Jason speak a little bit. Uh, Jason is my West Coast buddy and uh, a tech guru and legal guru and uh, a good friend of mine. Jason? All right. Hey, thanks, Vince, uh, for the kind words. And thank you, Brian, uh, for making this opportunity available. Um, I, I, in, in watching previ previous webinars, I kind of saw that there is a little a slide a component, so I put one together. Um, we're hoping to actually spend more time in the, the potential doing and, and showing, but I thought that we can walk through a little bit of what the uh, the product is. And so I think, uh, can everybody see my screen, uh, Vince and Brian, the, the, you got the Ox logo there, automation for Google Documents and Tasks? Definitely. Looking good. Looks good. Yeah. If we're going to be serving people uh, in this, you know, 21st century in the kind of mobile smartphone uh, on the go world. It's important that the delivery system be not just mobile friendly, but I'll even go a step further and say mobile native. And if, you know, the people and I, I have a lot of respect for the the people that have been fighting the the, the battle with uh, serving the the many with with limited resources. And I think you know people have seen that. Websites, even mobile responsive friendly websites don't always translate well to a, a mobile phone experience. And if we don't have a good experience, people, they're not going to use it if the, the send button ends up being under the, the fold, so to speak, and it's not intuitive to swipe up or if a box that needs to be checked isn't there. So, so I'm a big believer that it's a lot easier to start mobile native and then go back to a web type of experience rather than trying to push the web experience into the mobile. Uh, another piece is that as we move forward in whether it's uh, you know artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning, uh, expert systems, what I like to call augmented legal, because I think at the end of the day, people do need a voice. That's why they're kind of our lawyers in the first place is that people can't always stand up for themselves or articulate their issues. And that's why lawyers have a job. So the, the DocuBot platform, uh, yeah, as I mentioned here, we're, we're looking to, to leverage uh, artificial intelligence or expert systems. I don't want to pin myself or offend people that, you know, there's so many terms being thrown about, but as we see it right now, you have a document assembly, uh, questionnaires, um, diagnostics, FAQs, Vince, what was your term you coined yesterday? The uh, you, uh, operational. You had a you had a term. If you don't remember it, we can we'll get to it. But it was a uh, you know basically uh, you know an assistant of some sort. Do you remember? I do. Uh, I was uh, calling it an onboarding agent, uh, an bringing clients into not just the intake portal, but actually having assistance through it and onboarding them with documents, etc., questions. Right. And, and I think that that I want to say that that hits a big part of the challenge facing, um, you know, LSCs, legal aids and, and even just private practice, small town attorneys or small attorney shops. And that is if somebody calls an institution and that call is regarding a document, a letter they received in the mail. If we don't have as practitioners, if we don't have that document in front of us it's not going to be very helpful. And then so I'm, I'm digressing a bit from the document assembly, but the idea of the onboarding agent is to, when a person is gonna be talking to a lawyer whose time is valuable or limited, we need to have more substance and less procedure. And that's where artificial intelligence and onboarding agent can help. Now, these are many things that can be imagined and, and built going forward. What we've done right now is we have the, uh, 
document automation served up via chatbot. And so we'll, well, I think, well, you know, one of the best things we'll do to just get in and, and show it to you. Um, but we can take a look, but just uh, in wrapping up here, the, uh, the reason that I, you know, mentioned the native uh, platform is that we've got, you know, it's got to be mobile friendly. You know, the, the, the data is there, the, the statistics of everybody's moving to smartphone. Um, for lower socioeconomic, many people, that's their only access to a broadband connection. Um, so the platform itself, mobile friendly client service, communication. People are very comfortable dealing with a chat or a text-based medium rather than simply, uh, you know, a box and then moving the mouse or touching your finger into a box and typing there. It's just more intuitive, more fluid. Uh, you know, content control. Um, as you'll see today, we have a submission tool, and we only anticipate. And actually, one of my motivation in speaking with Vince and getting before this audience is we are looking to discuss how we kind of make this a little more uniform, uh, the experience of actually submitting uh, documents. And we'll get into to some of the discussion of variables and whatnot in a bit, but some of that needs to be standardized. Um, reporting. Reporting is essential. The nice thing about doing something in a native mobile app is reporting it, you know, very easy to take all of these touches. Um, that kind of ties into five, the CRM or the the management system that the LSC may use. And then with this platform, you can not only send an email or a communication to the LSC that somebody's filled out a document. If you have a pro bono attorney, they can be CC'd, so to speak. So, so it's a nice integration. Um, I can send this. These are just if people are going to be looking on how to, uh, to jump in. Um, so uh, what do you think, Vince? Should we show them maybe? Do you want to walk them through the document that you did a little earlier? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to so go ahead and navigate to the submission uh, form? Yep. 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 So, so a quick question here. So um, all of the the tech behind um, DocuBot, it, it looks like it's all uh, sort open source here on GitHub and then uh, you're running stuff on uh, WordPress also. So anybody else can can take kind of see how it works behind the scenes. Is that correct? Well, and now, now I've got sitting right next to me, Brian, we have a special guest. I have Trey Richards, who's uh, my lead developer on this. I wanted to make sure, Vince said we might have a, a, a fairly tech savvy crowd. So I wanted to make sure, uh, you know, I buttress that. I'll, I'll let Trey speak to that. I have my own opinions, but Trey, Trey can speak to that. Um, yeah, so like, the the docubot like the actual engine behind the like natural language stuff and the ai and all of that is actually not open source okay but all of the open source stuff that we have is how people can integrate with that engine um using like open source libraries or using open source plugins you mentioned the wordpress plugin Mm -hmm. um, so, so basically, we it's kind of a two tiered thing. But the the back end engine is not open source, but access to the the API that it provides is open source, and we have a few different libraries available on GitHub. Okay, um, so so individuals that are working with you um, do not have the opportunity to to see the source code. Um, but it's the interface that's open source, or what what talks to the source code. Is yeah, that accurate. Yeah, okay. yeah, basically. I mean, the source code for the documents themselves um, aren't readily available, but aren't necessarily proprietary. Like on our end, they may be on the end of the people who are submitting the documents. But the the source code for the actual AI and like the chatbot itself is closed source. Okay, um, and if if people work with you on this, um, what type of uh, statistics or reporting or that type of stuff are available um, to them? And well, that is it, um, it a fair bit. I mean, all of the the calls you can say, or there, there's there's two. There's kind of. Uh, open lines, which is initiating a thread, and then there's actually uh, calls to the, the server. And so we can make that available. The document, I guess if I go back here to kind of this the reporting, 
Um, the reporting I would anticipate, as you see, content origination, duration, and notes, those type of, of things will be available. There's a, we're not really looking to hide uh, that part of it. As a matter of fact, the, what the creation, you'll, they'll get every time somebody's creating a document, is we'll, we'll jump into that in a, in a minute as you see the the process a little more but they'll get notification of that um, they can get notification of how many documents were started but not finished um, how how many calls if you would you know if you if you think from what is your name to great hit here to print or email a copy of your document you know there's so many uh, hits that would take place or calls and they, they would be able to see information like that so it's, it's fairly fairly open where we are, and, and what's kind of exciting to me in, in being before this audience, and, and, and you know, we're okay. That, I think that definitely answers my question there. Um, and people, I've got a few comments here. People are very excited to see the demo. So, okay. excellent. All right, let me uh, jump over to, and so I'm just going to show you on a uh, on this is the plug in on on our. So, and actually, I wonder if I should do it. it you, know, I, you know, I mentioned mobile friendly. I think it would be kind of cool to, uh, is to, is to just show them what it would look like on the mobile device. That might be an interesting. I think that'd be great. And while you're yeah. pulling that up, um, I'll just speak a little bit to what Trey said. Um, I, I think to translate it, maybe in a legal aid world a little bit, um, all the plugins are open source. Uh, there's a, a WordPress plugin. Um, we've requested uh, working with a group on a TIG for a Drupal plugin for all um, uh, Drupal 7, Open Advocate, and all that. Um, uh, the documents that you submit and the code within the documents are all open. So it's kind of like hot docs. You know, the documents are yours and everything. You can't crack, crack the kernel really in hot docs. Um, so it, it's similar in nature to that, except a lot of the kernel here is. Uh, you know, some AI interface with a uh, Watson. And then are you guys seeing uh, my screen? You should just see a little screenshot oh. of me. Uh, we currently see the DocuBot. Dancing around? Yep. Well, while he's setting that up, this is Vince again. Um, so just this morning, um, I went to uh, this uh, submit field right here um, and uh, marked up a document. Uh, it took about 15 minutes. Uh, it was a quick claim deed. Submitted it. The markup language is uh, remarkably easy. And uh, not sure what Jason is doing here. Um, but we'll scroll down in a moment uh, below. All right, here we go. Okay. All right. Can you guys see my uh, phone screen? Yep, yes. I got it. All right, I was just, uh, so I'm just jumping into, you know, one of uh, the the apps that DocuBot exists on, but this can give you a, uh, a little bit of a feel. So, and this app so, is available in the Apple Store, Google Play. Uh, yeah, and, and this is something, we can speak to sorry i moved my phone around so i'm just going to hit i'm going to start a new a new one here so do you see hey i'm the docubot and i'm just going to walk you through one of my favorites because it's it's quick so right now you're on your mobile phone jason correct right can they can you see kind of you got the classic iphone yes yes little. definitely we can see it And then you can also speak into it, but I think it get a little confusing with all. I don't want to get any latency either. So we can do voice to text uh, uh, along with this mobile. So you could actually speak to the phone, um, speak to your yeah, uh, robot. Yes. Washington. Utah. Mail. Uh, See that, that it, didn't, it didn't like uh, what it picked up, so it gave us a little right. flummox, no problem. And then I'm going to show you a little thing. I believe it'll. Tell us. I thought previously sometimes it'll grab a misspelling, and so this is something cool that exists with DocuBot that. Uh, 
um, is not typical in a lot of the AI or machine learning. Now, do you see where it says, let's double check I understood that. Is all of this correct? If I say no, I'm now able, it'll ask me what part did I get wrong? I don't have to go back through and redo all of that. So I can just say something like, hey, Okay, let's try that again. What state? <laughs> okay, now I'm going to say yes. And now we just generated the power of attorney. I'll try to zoom in. Jason Bell is appointed Tyler Todd of Washington County, Utah. It's just a simple, right? It's not, you know, it's a, you know, it's a it's fairly big. You know, it's, it's a power of attorney. And so that's what it looks like in real life. Um, we can, we'll provide some links uh, so people can, um, let me just jump out of this. So, um, so people can go, we'll give the link they can try there. Like I said, there's a WordPress plugin they can get, uh, they could launch it on their own site and then hit Vince or I up for the, they'll need to get the, the credentials from us, but that we're, we don't have a problem with that. We can make those available and they can play with it on their website. I'll just jump on the site here. Uh, what can you do? And he'll give us, we got about, uh, um, he's got what, a will, request for repairs. There's a few things there. There's, there's actually, some documents that are um, direct link only that are not appearing on the list. We have a, some, some demo documents, but it, it's pretty pretty easy to, to interface. So do you have any questions at this point? Oh, I guess nope. no. Looking good. All right, so let me show you. I'm gonna work a little bit backwards here. Um, I was just going to show this is this is what the the plugin looks like on the back end. So you can see I'm in the back end of my site. I got the little DocuBot there. Um, you get the key, the secret, um, where we want the VCCs to come from. You can upload an image of your uh, later or whatnot, and then you got a a little uh, visual editor here where you can put some text. That could be instruction. Um, hey, this is how we do it. Um, what we anticipate is that in, in the, the upcoming, you know, I'd say I'd say realistically by the, the summer, probably mid-summer, August timeframe, there will be a more robust admin type of interface on here that will accomplish some of the tasks we're gonna see today. We, we fully anticipate that people will be able, we can have a submission tool, but we really wanna get into a, a much more uh, automated uh, flow. And that, and that part of why we're here is uh, to talk to uh, people about what they see as the, um, you know, some of the standards. Some, where, what do we need to do? Um, you know, what, what are the areas? So, Vince, do you want to, uh, I'm trying to think if we want to walk them through. Do, do we want to submit well, one? Yeah, or? yeah, hold up there. No, we don't, I don't think we have to actually do it, but uh, do uh, open invite to anyone out there. Um, to navigate uh, to this URL, um, I don't think you might not be able to see it in the address bar. Or um, I can, I can, but if you let me throw it up for them so they can. Uh, okay. I'll just put it here Great. quick so they can. So if anyone has, um, you know, just a maybe a one pager or something, uh, not a dozen inserts or any inserts really, um, something to submit. Um, we'll walk you through it and uh, talk about the process and how the process will be, how the process is currently, insofar as having a document automated. So if uh, you got like a little letter or uh, I don't know, um, I did a quick claim deed, something like that, um, not too horribly complex, um, uh, you're welcome to go to this URL um, and follow the instructions that we're just about to walk through. And uh, we'll see if that'll be automated, uh, how many can be automated before the end of this uh, program. What do you think, Jason? There we go. There we go. Um, so I think yeah, he's, te he's teasing me a little bit because I got Trey sitting with me here. But let's, uh, I can, if people can, hopefully they can do that. Um, can I put it, can we put it on the message to the group? Is there a way to do that? Yeah, Chat. yeah. Yeah, I'll I'll chat it out. Um, or here, onelong.com.us. 
So yeah, if you wanna if you wanna go back uh, to uh, the submission page. Yeah, I would. Okay, I was just I don't know if that hit it. So there. So yeah. So if anybody wants to play around, I mean, this is there. You know, it's pretty easy. So um, all right. So we're back to the the submission page, and um, you can just kind of see. You know, it'd be your first name, last name, emails, verify emails, some info. You would provide a um, a, a document title. Uh, you can provide the, the 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 what you see is what you get editor here and maybe what I can do let me just show them I'll try to see if I can parallel this because I think that that could help okay so. I think I might have sent that link out to organizers and panelists only if, if so Ron maybe get that out to everyone so this is I'm gonna see if I can get these up side, can by, side by side real quick so Here's what, so this is an email that Vince would have received. And then you can see here, submitter info. And then we're here in the email, Vincent Morris, Vince Morris, company name, Open Law, his website. And then now let me just, sorry guys, I'm not the. So uh, Vince, I have upgraded you to organizer, so you should now have the ability to put it in the chat. Thanks, Ron. Um, if we head back to that URL, I can also type it into the chat. Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm good, brother. Thanks. Excellent. All right. So I don't. Let me see if I can kind of at least. Uh, well, Jason, just to maybe go a little more chronologically, um, if we could. Sure. Yeah. Let's pull up the let's pull up the submit screen before we see what happens after that. Okay. Sure. 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 So, so we're here in the um, the document. You want you want me to grab one that I you know. And let's keep, you want to switch screens and you, you go to the URL and you play around or what, what's more comfortable for you, Vince? Oh, oh, man. You go ahead and drive. You can grab something. I'll just talk a little bit while you're yeah, getting you, uh, that ready. Cool. Let's actually right. submit, a, submit a document. Sure. So just to clarify, the way that the, this works is so somebody can submit a document through this form and then the AI tries to figure out what would go into each of the different spots there? No, let, yes, let me no. Go ahead, Jason. I was going to say what what we're looking similar to. So we're going to look at. You should have my screen here. Is a um, a special power of attorney. Okay, this is what the document looks like in Word. Is everybody yep. seeing that? So Definitely. now I took that. All I did was a. Oh, there we go. Let's see, open read. Yeah, you're good. I see. You. Oh, I needed the squiggly. Sorry, that was my, my that was my template. Now, okay, so we're back here. We got the the text. So I copy it and I paste it. Now this is, I've already added my variables. Now does it, this should look somewhat familiar to, to people that are, you know, whether it's hot docs or uh, the A2J, the different, the different things that are available. So I have now, through my, my squigglies, that's why the document is called squiggly, my double squigglies, and then inside my variable. So now I've, I've taken those. So what I would do, and I'm, I'll just do it here. I would now copy this, and then you can do, you know, you could do it. You could do it either way. I, I've already edited it, so I could do it from the top here and just copy that text, and then move that over to my submission tool. So now in my submission tool, well, I've got a, a, a WYSIWYG editor here. It's going to be fairly, fairly true. Um, and then if I've got document title, um, we will call this uh, uh, So I'm there. If I had any but the header, this could be, you know, this uh, document is uh, provided courtesy of, you know, whatever, you know, the, whatever we want to say. Um, Now I come down here. Now it's going to the same thing with the footer, but now we're going to have to go to our variable name. So the first variable name we have in here is going to be principal first name. Okay, so the principal first name again. You can, and this is where we're working with getting some form of standardization because as I, I pulled up a document and let me just jump because I, I thought it was interesting to. Uh, to take a look at, but this is from the LSE standards and 
practices for, for hot doc applications. And this thing, I believe there were eight best practices. Oh, sorry. The best the best practices um, is just there. There is no standardization. There are some suggestions, but I think that maybe this could be a space where collectively, and this is I talked to Vince, and if there are people that are interested in working with us on the this library, we are very interested in uh, in trying to somewhat standardize. I mean, because the issue that I see is if you look at fillable PDFs, for example, in the Judicial Council forms in California, they have one index. If you look at the hot docs, it appears there's another index. If you look at some of the A to J stuff, so so that I think this is one area that, that everybody would be well served in picking one. And, and you know, again, I don't know if that's even possible, but that's something I'm in in and would love to work with anybody who's who's interested in how to do that. Um, so again, so the variable name, uh, you know, first name, um, then you could do a description. What is the name of the person giving the power of attorney? Okay, so question mark. So now that's and now you can add. You would go through. Uh, each of those, oh, what did I do? Oh, I, no, I hit enter, sorry. Um, well, how do you enter? I hit, I hit plus. Oh, oh, there we go. Okay, so now I can go in. You see, I, I can minus that and I can go plus. So I must have hit the keyboard. Um, so, so you go through and you add your question. So what we'll do is once that's done, the user is going to get an email of essentially what they've done. So we've got the document title, there was no header document. We've got the information there. That's, you kind of see what the document looks like. You can see there's page breaks. Now we have the variables, name grantor. And so everybody can see that. So this is the, we'll call this the coding, if you would, of, of the document. And I believe many of the, the listeners and the, the participants are aware they more documents uh, than I have, um, but they should be able to use a lot of their existing work to now move that into the chatbot interface. And that's probably one of the most exciting things I believe that that is going on right now. Is so if you've the, got a bunch of documents that have already been coded for hot docs or for something else, you've already got this type of setup put in place. That that is correct, and and we would um, also we are working. You know, there there's just there's different components of it. I will just say that we are working on interfacing with existing index libraries. So if you have coded a bunch of your own documents, you have a library it, that that will save you some time over the long haul, right? This I'm not saying you could just magically you know right now, but but we're we have that well in mind. That's why I believe the standardize or, or a greater standard for the library or the variable index is, is very important for, for this community because that I, you know, I think a lot of the legwork has been done, but now what we want to do is deliver it in a greater usable format, right? That, that's, that's kind of where, you know, where I see it going. And, and if I could pipe in for a minute, Jason, this is Vince. Um, a thing I'm really excited about is not just the natural language learning. We haven't got into kind of the recursive feedback loops of the AI and everything, but um, as we go in, and right now we're just hard programming, as you see the names of the variables and, and the questions, but that itself is becoming a library and is learning, currently supervised learning. And the more consistent we can get with nomenclature, the better, but those variables at some point um, will be able to be recognized, right? Um, and uh, uh, in a way, automated programming to an extent. If we can see that there's, you know, hundreds of variables from pre-existing hot docs templates that uh, you, you use this uh, same nomenclature and same variable structure, then, um, you know, inserts can go ahead and happen. So in a way, we're talking about 
robot programming to an extent. And tell me if I'm off base, Jason. I know we're big dreamers and this is a little bit out. But it's not just teaching um, on the AI end, which we'll get to in a bit, the natural language, but the computer language as well, if that makes sense. Jason, That's, correct me if I'm wrong. That 100% is the goal to basically have the AI write itself. And uh, secondly, I just add, and, and, and why I'm excited about this is because, it, you know, it's not, um, uh, it's collaborative, right? It's, it's not competitive. Um, we're building off, and, and trust me, I know I've been doing it for a long time. I've, I've programmed a lot of hot docs, and there's so much investment in that for those who, who, who've gone that route. And, um, uh, you know, and for those who don't, it, it looks very daunting. Um, and I think this might be a little easier interface, a lot easier interface. But for those that's already invested in such, you know, you, you can't just let that go. But yet to get hot docs into a mobile friendly way um, uh, that, that's accessible to, to, you know, so many more people, um, you know, you don't want to forego that, uh, but yet you want to do that. And so I find this is a bridge uh, technology that not just a bridge, but an extension uh, into the future. But I'm getting all dreamy and sappy. Jason, go ahead, man. Well, I think we we're about to no, submit. No, no, I do. You, you, you and I, you know, I mean, it's, it's kind of funny because Vince and I share Vince, you know, from from, uh, you know, decade and a half in the trenches and and me from a, a love of. Of, of problem solving, you know, and I'll just go just, you know, by a little bit of a segue. I've been working personally on document automation for about six years. So I had this, I went and my thought was when I saw LegalZoom, I was so uh, offended, if you would, by the fact that they were charging for some of the stuff. And so I, I started out free will. I have free will attorney is the you know, domain I own. And, and I went set about through my WordPress to build a, uh, an automated will. And it, it was, it was functional. The problem was every time I updated the website, it messed with the code because it was embedded. The code wasn't, you know, the code was actually part of the website for the document automation. And so like I was beating my head against the wall and for years and trying to get there. And it really wasn't, until I came across the idea of a native mobile app. Because, you know, the, some of these things, I mean, it's just, I, I will tell everybody participating that if they are considering moving forward in the machine learning AI realm, that they really need to consider writing in Swift. And, you know, I, there's a lot of languages and a lot of people have spent many years and decades with some code, but, we, you know, it has to be deliverable to the mobile you know, and if, if we don't have that, it just makes it, you know, you're, you're, you're going to have, you could have some of the greatest logic available, but if people won't use it or if it's difficult to use, you're just not going to, it's, it, it's not what we're trying to accomplish. And that's Brian, you know, earlier to your question about kind of the open sourceness of this, you know, this is why I've essentially made our engine available to people that want to play with it is because I, I think there is a greater work here. You know, there's a great, there's yeah, something. I, that, you know, I that, completely that agree with you, both in that we, it's got to be mobile first. Um, our client demographic uh, views already to our website are heavily headed in that direction. And the collaborative community aspects of sharing variable names, creating a standardized dictionary, that type of stuff. Uh, the more people that participate in these projects like this, the better it is for the community and the easier it will become. Uh, we recently at one of the hackathons talked about an open data standard and assembling that or creating it ourselves currently would be very encumbersome. But if we had thousands of documents that were already coded and then started to be standardized, creating that standard would be so much easier. Oh, absolutely. And, I, and this is this is what excites me about this juncture in legal technology, serving the, the public. I mean, this is, we are, it, it's almost like something that has been thought about when computers first came and then the internet and then all of these things. And it's really culminating because people are walking around with a laptop computer connected to the internet that they are very comfortable interfacing with. And that's their smartphone. That, that, that is just, it's, it's amazing, you know, to, to have that right now. And, and I think that's where we, we need to leverage that and, and, and leverage it collaboratively, right? With the numbers that you see thrown out, 80%, 80 plus percent of people not represented, not seeking help, 
there's no reason for that. It's more of a let let's give them you know what, what they need and then then use our resources again. I always say procedure is for the the robots, substance is for the attorneys, and I think they're they we're really getting to that that space. Um, uh, if I may, let me jump over. I wanted to show everybody because this is uh, you know something that I I believe in. Just again going back to serving everyone, but so DocuBot does exist um, on Facebook. Um, and it's a, uh, the, the site here is, uh, it's, it's AUX AI, Facebook slash AUX AI, but you can just do the same things that we've done. Um, let's see, now is it gonna, I'm just trying to see if it, if it might, uh, is it, oh, okay. We're on the yeah. Oh, test button, okay. I'm, I'm the admin. That's right. That's it. I always so. So in the mobile component aspect right now, um, uh, you you can create automated documents in Facebook. I mean, it, w you can patch this uh, just about anywhere you want. Facebook, uh, you know, you, you've seen the the world internet maps. Um, uh, that's where a lot of people go. Why go to a statewide website if if, if that's where you're connected? Each click matters, right? I like that each click matters, um, and and here he is doing an AI integrated uh, automated document on Facebook. Am I right, Jason? No, you are right. You're you're right. I mean, there's even. I mean, I just I, I don't I don't want to like you know the you know scare people you know, but there is there there's some things. I mean, you know, we, they can it can be set in. There's there's automation. This you know. The, the, the the permeations and believe you me I, I'm just trying to show the the strongest I'm leading with my strongest stuff here um, but we're working on you know and, and, and you know that you can make it if there's stumbling blocks if somebody is having a problem with the document they can type help and be connected with the human operator you know things things of that nature um, you know, again, I go back to that first part, you know, we didn't really touch on intake, but there is a, an intake form, um, you know, in, in the DocuBot and that can be, that's something that can be specialized uh, uh, for the, the different uh, um, LSCs that are out there because they might have different, uh, you know, poverty level guidelines or different they serve a particular community or a particular subset of the law but you know gathering those documents beforehand letting people know what to expect um you know this can be integrated with uh, videos that people have done uh, on what to expect and say a child uh, custody uh, determination or something like that you know just these these almost like we're, we're really taking the the learning experience and now applying it again to the this whole ai that oh have you know have you ever have you filed something ever before no well here's you know how about just something on decorum you know don't show up to court in a in a tank top or uh with a uh, flip-flops and shorts on you know dress for court like you might do for a business meeting something like that you know just these you know, little things that that could help people you know not be so intimidated by the system, and then more likely to use uh, the DIY or the the you know DIY plus tools that we're going to be making available. When I say we, I mean the greater community. And Jason, if I could, uh, so stay on that screen. Um, if you'll notice what happens, it's, it's the little things, man. Sometimes you bury the lead, brother. Um, you were doing, <laughs> I believe, uh, an expungement form. It looks like an Arkansas expungement, and then you typed in intake form or you could have spoke intake form, and then up, up, up hops an intake form. You, you didn't click, every click matters. That means like no clicks are the best clicks, right? So you immediately, you didn't go to another page, you didn't go to another link. Um, you started an intake form right there immediately. And that is kind of like, I don't want to use the word portal, but every, every automated document that you have is at one place. You, you know, you can make it, you could parse it out with different links if you wanted to for whatever reason, but you don't have to. It's one place. Uh, you, you, you type or select what you want and, and there you go. Um, Marketing is easier. Navigation, which is the hardest thing, is getting um, a client or a user 
to the resource that they need. So they're already at the resource. And yeah, you got to figure out what resource within that resource, but it takes away so many clicks, uh, which has been a struggle my entire career is, is, is getting people where they need to be, right? No. That was just amazing, uh, Jason. I didn't want that to be overlooked. <laughs> you know, uh, that's uh, one of my favorite parts. Um, let me also make a jump so people, because I think this is, uh, I do have a, it's it's a little more uh, limited of a site, but I mean, it's, it's very functional, but I'm just, this might be easy. So AUX.AI is kind of a DocuBot's home turf here, and that's, um, people can, can come over here, and, and we've got, these are just quick buttons here, the intake, expungement, legal wellness um that uh, uh vince mentioned on the expungement and then the the di legal wellness is a diagnostic tool you know do you have a checking account no if not here's a bank that'll give you 50 bucks for you know opening a checking account do you have credit card debt yes then uh, here's a consumer you know credit management you know just it, whatever you can you know what you can do uh you know financial wellness you know legal wellness you know do you have it you know are you eligible for an expungement you know, do you have a misdemeanor conviction that's more than five years old? Hey, is it, you know, not a DUI? Hey, here you go. Jump into this, you know, things like, you know, um, but you can come here. There is DocuBots here at the bottom. If you see on this, it's just a one page site, um, uh, but you can come here and then uh, play with DocuBot. So you can click on the buttons or play with DocuBot on uh, this site. Oh, let's see what can do. See, he got that. So, um, you know, here's a list of Doc, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you've got that. Um, and, it, you know, it's my, my goal is to make tools and, 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 you know, I shouldn't say our goal because Vince is, you know, you know, guided me, as you see, he finds all the kernels that I'm just, I, I'm big picture and, you know, you know, we need big, small, and then, and, and also other opinions, you know, outside of, of my own and, and Vince's. And that's why we're reaching out to this community is we want to make something that works. That will be you. On that note, um, I'll, I'll jump in here too. And I don't know how the other invitation is going. I don't know if anybody chose to, to submit anything or not. But on this one, a little easier invite. Um, go there, and I, 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 I call it tricking the robot. Um, and, and you know, uh, you got to type something somewhat sensible. Um, but when we started out, the thing wasn't nearly as smart as it is now. And it's still a baby, fair enough, I think, but it's getting smarter. What can do? It wouldn't have caught that a few months ago, I don't think, or at least about four or five months ago. And um, it caught that. It pulled that up, right? It got your N-O-N -N instead of N-O-N-E, I noticed earlier. So the more people participating or using it, um, you know, the better, uh, well, at least the smarter it gets. Um, and uh, I like when it gets flustered too, because uh, it's a funny dancing robot. Uh, Jason, is that a fair invite or, or no? No, absolutely. It, it absolutely. I mean, it is. You know, I you know I, I will you know will tell you that uh, you know with all sincerity. I mean, we're we're working. If people, this is this is kind of uh, you know pioneering uh, type of stuff, and the people that are are getting involved are the people that are are getting getting more of a say. Because if, if we look at it, it's like, hey, that, that's a great idea. Gee, how can we, you know, we're not so set in, in our code base that we're saying, hey, sorry, we cannot make any changes. We are, you know, trying to be agile, but over time you get less agile. That's just the, you know, part of the unfortunate world of, of developing software. And, but right now, if people think that this is interesting, you know, I welcome any communication and we're, you know, we're, we're here wanting to make it, you know, not only uh, user friendly to the public, but we want to make it user friendly for the technician, for the developers that, you know, the, the, the LSC developers, you know, because everybody, there is a lot of programming that is going on, uh, you know, historically. That, that's why I love the, you know, the LSCs have been, been trying to do this job for a long time. And if I can give or we can give them a tool that doesn't tell them to scrap what they've done, but it allows them to bring that logic over, to bring the coding over, I, I think we can do great things. And it's going to be, you know, that's, a, that, that's just where I'm coming from. Right on, right on. Hey, man, we were talking earlier, and I don't know um, where we're at on it, but 
we're able to push some of this uh, on the intakes uh, and the diagnostic tools to a, a case management system. You successfully have got it into Clio yesterday. Correct. Is that right? That is correct. Um, let me, we have a, uh, a Zapier. So we have an API. I go with the open API. Yes, kind of. Yeah. So we're, we're building a, I mean, we could just jump to Zapier. You want to jump over Zapier? That well, was, yeah, yeah, I mean, I can just talk about it. So um, we, I mean, only recently have we started opening up our API. We've been working on kind of standardizing certain things, but we recently opened up certain pieces of our API so that people can now automate these connections. We we discussed actually building integrations to each of these services, but there's just so many out there that it's pretty difficult to, to keep everybody happy. But the good news is, is that there's things like Zapier and um, you know tools that help connect services online, and they've got tons of integrations. And so we've been working on our end to get some, um, some of our API functionality into some of these services in particular Zapier to begin with and from there you can then automate uh, the integrations that you need as opposed to us trying to guess where the the best ways to put our resources are right now yeah. and and that's kind of a again going back to hopefully the the sincerity of, of what we're trying to do is we we want to help the community that is um, at you know kind of at large uh to let's see here let's pull up a tray and you know and, and part of what we believe is is giving people tools to to use the way they um kind of you know look to use them so uh you can see uh see here that these were some some tests from from yesterday uh the early ones so uh, one law call app with Trey Richard, the call, it gives the start time, the end time, the notes, um, over here, you know, here you can see, this is what I would, I typed in. Um, obviously we will look at, you know, final integrations of the document, the document, when documents are done in DocuBot, the user, it could, the user can receive the copy. The LSC can receive, it depends on how you want to create the flow. Sometimes people want to actually have the document you know, okay, it's ready for you to pick up here because there may be a requirement of funding that they, you know, come to a physical office, but that it can be printed from the phone as you saw me do the power of attorney or emailed from there, or it can just say great contact Jason over here to, to get a copy of your, your document. Um, let me take a look here. Let's see. I'm just looking for the, I was actually the first zap. Um, and let's see here. I was just going to show. Oh, let's see the headers. And by calls and zaps, we're talking about just uh, talking to each other. The database, uh, the application. Is that correct, Jason? Correct. That. So basically, the idea is whatever happens on the app, you shouldn't have to go input that into the CRM. It should just push over. Right. It would be Jason Bell has created a power of attorney on 329 at 1030 Pacific or whatever, you know, something along those lines. Absolutely. Um, when, and to think about that, uh, just as someone who's done a lot of automated uh, documents and uh, a lot of uh, pro se and assisted pro se work, to have a log of that. Now, of course, you could strip any identifying uh, information that you need, but that, you know, this document was completed at this point at this time. And have a log of that. Um, I think it's pretty amazing um, to have. While we have Trey on the phone, um, let's yeah. talk just a little bit. Uh, since he's primary developer, um, you you mentioned uh, you know how we're working in Swift and uh, on the server side Go, and uh, with most of the client side stuff in PHP, HTML, and PDF uh, output, um, right. along with the inference engine that we're using, which is uh, currently uh, using IBM Watson. Although we're we're thinking about um, some different uh, AI uh, aspects, but um, also wanted to, so maybe uh, Trey could speak a little bit about um, that environment. But uh, also mainly wanted him to address uh, the uh, the security output and input uh, both on REST and on pushing uh, the encryption. 
currently uh, we're using buckets uh, on Amazon. But Trey, could you speak to a little bit to um, uh, uh, the effort put towards security? Yeah. So, I mean, starting out, obviously, um, you know, we want to to just hit all of like the low hanging fruit as far as security is concerned, make sure that there's no transmissions over the wire that aren't encrypted and, you know, make sure that we store all of the sensitive data in, um, in encrypted formats and, you know, just make sure that we knock out all of that stuff to begin with. Then, like you said, um, most of our architecture currently is housed on um, Amazon's cloud services and uses uh, a lot of the built-in security features that they've developed um, to to try to keep this stuff secure. But a lot of the stuff that um, maybe people might not see initially or like we never provide a a raw link to any document it's always a short-lived link that um, will expire after a certain amount of time so that there's never any like any personal data floating out there that could just be scraped um, I mean I don't know that if there's anything specifically that you're looking to hear about the security on but we definitely try to um, make sure that all of the sensitive data is encrypted at all times and all data is encrypted over the wire. So there can't be any sniffing going on. Yeah, that was about it, man. I appreciate it. Um, I appreciate the work you've done on it too. It's and, a bunch of paranoid uh, freaks here in legal aid, man. Just let well, you know that, how we are. Well, that, and that's one thing to, to speak to that again, talking about, and you know, I don't, the standardization is not the right word, but maybe some best practices. I think with DocuBot and going forward, we're, we are going to be able to move people into a more closed environment, into a password protected environment. And we don't, you don't have to, that's not, it's all you can see. I went right to a website. I didn't have to log in, but we, we have the functionality to allow it to be password protected. We, again, going with, with, without the clicks, you know, allowing that to, embed or to exist on the LSC website. That's part of these Drupal integrations and, and otherwise. But I think that is some smart behavior in this world ever growing. I mean, heck, they just said that, you know, whatever. I mean, that we're, we're, our internet uh, search uh, history is now gonna be sold to, you know, for even more ads or whatnot. And, and that just, you know, I like the idea of, especially around legal documents and legal conversations to, password protect that to, to have them step through the door they don't need to start there you could do the whole document experience and maybe if you want to actually receive the document you're going to need to to verify yourself and um maybe i'll show one more teaser the fun one all right here i'll I'm just yeah that's, that's definitely an interesting uh, conversation to have in the future is what type of access controls are those uh, type of things. I, I think that there is also um, some argument for um, allowing users to use products anonymously and then ask for uh, data to be destroyed at a certain period of time. Uh, the more data that is being collected, the more chances there are of data leaks or um, security violations. If there's data destruction uh, policies that enable information to be removed, uh, that has a positive. On the other hand, if users can create a, accounts that keep consistent variables, there's data integrity um, issues over time and there are uh, it can make filling out future documents much easier. In the civil legal needs study that we did here in Washington State, we found out that most of our um, client, low income clients have an average of eight or nine legal issues and being able to address wow. multiple legal issues um, with accurate information that has already been entered on another document um, could have a very positive effect. But once you start storing that data, um, these security things that you are already putting in place, best practices, um, are essential for keeping client data safe long term. So 
a lot of stuff to think about there and very important topics as we move forward in doing more of this type of online service through AI. No, well, well put, Brian. Um, I'd also, uh, so some of the data that we are looking at, we don't really need identifying information, but the data on which choices and which branches um, to teach the AI. And then the user selection of like wipe my data. I love that. I look forward to that future conversation, Brian. Well put. Oh, the driver's license scan. Yay. Yeah, I just thought this this is just a fun one to to let you know where my my mind is. But uh so driver's license scan. This is in in our uh our app and it says, you know, start scan. I just wanted to I'll show you here. So this is my license. And then I turn it over and leveraging the uh, information on the uh uh the back of the the license there you can see I just pulled all of my my info and so think of how valuable that is in correctness of it so now if we have people start the automated documents by scanning their license their id their matricula consulate i mean whatever we want to do that can really uh one we're saving steps we're probably reducing typos assuming the information is correct and we can you know validate and ask them if it's correct but that's a, uh, you know, th that's where it's going. You know, it, it's, it's, you know, these are things that are uh, fun to a lot. Did everybody catch that? Did I go through it too fast or did that come across? No, I think uh, maybe I've just done it so many times. I love this. I use it because I always misspell people's names and clients' names, and it's so quick. Boom. Um, integrating that into the automated da document platform. Hey, we got a couple of minutes before questions. Yeah, that's what I was hoping you would do. Um, and uh, so, so that app, one one law right there is, uh, yeah, open it up, man. Or, or um, oh, right, another well, aspect, we're really, we see this as a platform. So the automated document aspect is a huge aspect. Um, but you know, uh, documents is just one aspect, right? Lawyers do at least three things: they talk, uh, and they write, and uh, they're supposed to think. Um, uh, so uh, again, uh, this is a huge component, but only one part of. Uh, an AI automated platform. And that's why I was thinking of that whole term that we talked about in the beginning, an onboarding agent, if you will. So are you gonna show them around one law real quick while we wrap up? Sure, sure. I mean, I was just gonna, so I, I didn't I didn't mean to, I mean, I guess if I, we're here, so uh, yeah, I guess the cat's out of the bag. Um, so basically, you know, you jump in, again, as my, my belief in the, the messaging uh, being the important part of uh, the, this whole thing because people are, are very text chat savvy is that that needs to be the core of the, the document or core is not document core of the environment so we can see here this is just a, a, an easy way to um, add a, a user uh, so this is I'm just gonna throw in uh, I guess I could do I could do Brian's and think about that but uh, I've, I've already thrown that one in but I threw an email it knew who I was um once that person is in the environment it is going to now connect them with it can be an attorney this can be an lsc so this can be this entire process is is white labeled when you have an attorney you see you have the function to uh chat with them it could also be a client though and you're protecting yourself your number and everything since you're in this environment um Correct. and yeah, it's all password protected. I'll show you one of the sexy features right next to my attorney is my file. So now, normally clients will send images because they're basically pictures, right? They, they get a document in the mail, so they're going to send a picture. So then that, that can be the pictures that they've been sent. Or as the attorney, you're going to send them files. So you're going to send them, uh, you know, I'm just hitting this in a new document PDF. Um, this was, you know, a filing. You know, so this is... You know, th this is where we see it going as far as um, interacting there. You have resources. Uh, resources can be, um, you know, just information. You know, again, as I mentioned with the videos, what to expect in a scenario. Um, you can, uh, you know, put in stuff from a website. This is all, uh, you know, easy to, to, to grab and can be pointed wherever we want to. Um, 
Uh, sure, I'll go ahead and tell here. Trey's, we're gonna do a little a demo. Trey's gonna gonna hit me up so you can see what what it looks like. I'm actually gonna go. So you see my phone looks like I'm getting a regular uh, Apple call there. So I will jump over. I'll, I'll log in there, and then uh, we might get a little little feedback because we're in the the same room here. But uh, now I'm talking to Trey, and I'm pl plugged into the computer, so we're probably not gonna hear him. So when I'm done, now I can put the notes in. Call from Trey Richards. Save that. I will get uh, an email saying, yeah, there's my email, my one law, your call. Um, here is the, the details. Um, caller's name, phone number, the state, and the, the notes. Of course, that can all be uh, customized to the, the LSD. We, we do offer offer a white label version of the app um, so people don't have to feel like they've invested in uh, you know our particular product. Let's, I want to see how, I don't know if Cleo's going to get it that quick. It does sometimes. Yeah. Cleo's got at least a four minute, uh, I think. Uh. Our system, um, oh, we let have me just pipe up. So because uh, we want to provide adequate time for the attorney to type any notes before it gets loaded into their CRM, our system's set on a 30 minute delay. Oh, gotcha. So, okay. um, so all the stuff will show up in like your various CRMs 30 minutes after the call takes place. And if you don't type your notes in 30 minutes, then you need to get faster. <laughs> so, <laughs> so let me let me show just maybe real quick before we go to questioning. So as Vince mentioned at 837 this morning, so probably two hours ago, he sent a, submitted a document through the submission tool. And if I go over here, And so you could go to the Facebook or wherever, you know, it's, it's, and so if I were to type here, quit claim deed. Perfect. Let's get started on a quit claim to you. What's the full legal name of the grant or the person buying or selling the property? Then you go here, you can see where Vince's first question, what's the, what is the full legal name of the grant or the person buying and selling the property? So that it went from submission to and, and that was done a little bit ago so we're right you know we got a little you know there's some latency right now we're getting it you know it, it's going to be quicker and, and quicker and better and better but that is uh you know that's what that's what's happening you know so for people that are interested in in getting their documents submitted and you know and working with this and we can you can see my little icon here we went with a neutral icon because we don't know if the person uh, is male or female um, and so instead we tried to be originally it was just the default and you know kind of not thinking the default was a, a, a male uh, you know icon uh, that, that still exists in, in some of the places but we've moved to this more of a neutral to try to be friendly you know just uh, kind of showing that, uh, that and that was actually something that uh, one of uh, the I don't know if they're the LSC or you know either, I don't know who funds them but one of the groups uh, made that comment and we were able to integrate because somebody told us and because people were actually using it. So, um, yeah, I don't know if it's question time or, you know, any. Actually, one last thing, if we could just have one more minute. Is your phone still up? Uh, I can get it on up. The machine? I would definitely um, yeah, also like to uh, invite people to start oh. typing in questions if they have any in the question uh, box so that we can read those off here at the end. Uh, additionally, if there are features that you have questions about or things that you think that this could do that you uh, please also type those in. Awesome, great, I hope y'all do. Um, uh, I, I think that we just missed a, a, a step there. Um, you, you showed the messaging and all that and you're getting the documents and the driver scan. But if you could pull up the Uber of law, if you will, real quick, so we can just give them a preview. We don't have to actually video conference, um, but you know, the map. Right, right. So um, this is something that, uh, and it's open to any legal aid org or any do-good org. Um, and uh, what you see here, uh, <laughs> pretend like they're little Uber cars, but they're lawyers, right? 
So, uh, well, there's Lee Richards, Arkansas, and Arkansas, and uh, so um, yeah, yeah, very good at California, man. Um, so you can actually find the lawyer closest to you or the legal aid closest to you. And here you have the option within a secure app where you could do a video conference call and there's all kinds of reasons, you know, uh, to do so. And so far as learning and taking in what you're hearing, but, um, even, there, there I am. And, uh, uh, but even if not, you can still contact through text or whatever, and then scan that driver's license, upload that document and have that intake so much quicker. And I don't know any legal aid attorneys out there like getting them to return, uh, you know, your uh, statement of citizenship or anything like that can take weeks and weeks, if, if ever sometimes, and um, it can be done almost instantaneously. Really cool thing off Legal Aid topic, though, you select one of those dots on the map, and you do you go ahead and select your attorney, say, I know Vincent Morris, I like him, I'm going to pick him as my go-to, or your Legal Aid, or whoever, and then if you do have a, uh, a need, and the re attorney is receptive, um, you could have a video conference call in some really heightened um, situations. Uh, just thinking of the last couple of years where there's been interactions with maybe the police or, or, or with anyone. Imagine being pulled over and able to just press your attorney automatic video conference and uh, recording and witness of a, of a traffic pullover. Um, little off legal aid topic, but just showing the platform that all these tools can plug into. So that was the last little bit I wanted to show, um, Jason. Perfect. Oh, sorry, I was playing around here. Um, yeah, I can yeah, see and, that, man. And just, and just, just, just to speak to that one final thing, I mean, we are uh, looking and speaking with, uh, you know, different with, you know, the, you know, the, I just, the, the way the Mexican consulate works, every state in Mexico has their own kind of consulate. And so we're speaking with a number of those in the Los Angeles area to essentially provide what uh, Vince just said, right? Somebody's knocking on the door and you now have access to somebody that can walk them through asking them, because it's not, it's, it's more, almost like more support really, but hey, do they have a warrant? You know, hey, what is the, you know, what's going on? You know, that type of thing. And, and that is, is where it's going. I mean, you know, the, the virtual practice of law, you know, when we're talking about serving uh, under, uh, you know, underserved or lower economic or people economically challenged, why are we making them spend gas to come down to an office when we should be able to provide almost all of it? And I'm a big, big believer in the, the, the e-notary uh, which is, I think, in about 20, no, it might not be 20, there might be 13 or so states right now. But if people can notarize documents over a platform, there's really not going to be a whole bunch of need for, you know, in person, unless there, there's a reason for it, right? If you're preparing someone for trial, you probably want to do it, you know, in face to face to kind of read them a little better. But if it's just a matter of document collection and and giving a better comfort level, you know, you, I believe that the virtual experience is going to suffice. And that's that's where video that's where where chat is good for gathering information, creating that closeness, if you would. That's what video is for. But I mean, that's a whole nother. I didn't mean to 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 go off topic. And I apologize for that. Yeah. Brother Jason just went off on the e notary. But I mean, let's just leave it with imagine someone knocking at your door and we can be there as attorneys or as any support system when needed with the documents. Uh, available immediately or just the voice of uh advocacy so i think that's amazing brother good work with the uh, los angeles uh and mexican consulate there man um anything else before we take questions no oh, i'm sorry I, I, I was just sitting i became a listener sorry no i'm i'm good I, i'm more you know i think i've spoken too much well, Brian, thank you for the time letting us uh, show off some of the work we're doing. We're super excited about it, highly collaborative. So we hope some people might be interested in, in dancing with the robot. So if people are interested in collaborating, collaborating with you or giving you a try, what is the best way for them to get a hold of you? Excellent. Uh, Jason, actually, I did want to address this. So um, they could go ahead and download the WordPress plugin. The Drupal is going to be a little bit. They can go ahead and integrate Facebook, correct? Yeah, they can. They they can just uh, the Facebook. Uh, they, they can. Just, I just put my uh, email uh, there, 
uh, that can be forwarded. Um, but the Facebook, really, it's just, just reach out to me and, and what they would like to, to see, you know, what, 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 they're, what they need. Because it's, it's on Facebook, you know, it, you need to give them uh, an app for their uh, web, not website, excuse me, for their Facebook page, for their LSC. Or they can just go right to the, the AUX um, Facebook page and, and put stuff there. And that's really what I'm, I'm trying to do is, is hopefully have a little bit of a community. Um, you can see I've put our, uh, there's the Facebook, uh, Twitter at uh, OxOx. They didn't have a AUX AI on Twitter. But so, you know, we're you know, just kind of getting going. If people want to show us some, some love or communicate that way, that would be great. I mean, I think I got three three followers on Twitter. It's pretty new, uh, but there's my uh, email. Um, and then, you know, but it's just, you know, I'm, I'm pretty accessible. This is what I do. I still practice a little bit of law, but not, not much. I really, uh, am, am spending full time developing the stuff and, you know, it's exciting. I mean, it's exciting to, to, you know, to have kind of made this uh, collaboration with Vince and, and, you know, it's just, it's, it's a good stuff. And Jason I'm, also, Oh, I'm sorry, brother. Um, uh, they can download the One Law app actually from from the Apple Store and uh, from for Android, correct? They, they can, they can. I mean, I did, again, I didn't want to be gratuitous about that, but I mean, it's you know, they it, they can. Uh, uh, I, I think if they just go to the any any of the sites, I mean, they'll, they, it's not hard to find. Um, I can type Jason, in. I gotta indoctrinate you, man. The, the legal aid, dude. We we pirate and take for free, and it's all good if you're no, offering I, something I, out there to play with, man. I I'm more than willing to be you know pirated, and, and I've I've been inviting people for a while now. It's not you know I will put people on and you know let them check it out. Mm -hmm. um, so so cool. and one of the resources that, that I would you do the Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, if you do do the WordPress plugin, you're going to need the key, right? And you need Correct. to contact Jason, the holder of the key for that. Yeah. Or, or, yeah, you know, either of us. I mean, you know, but, you know, just, you know, we'll, we'll get it. There's not, uh, it, it's not difficult. I mean, we can just send them one. What we like to do is just, uh, you know, know who we got them. So we don't, you know, so we know that, hey, uh, this is a real, a real person. It's just a little bit of quality control, right? I mean, because it is, um, you know, something that's uh, in, in still in the, the good faith uh, realm and we're probably slowly moving, uh, you know, a, a little bit more to just, hey, you know, we've got we got a lot of documents in there. And um, but it's that just it's just fun stuff. I mean, this is this is what I, I enjoy. Well, um, thank you guys so much for two additional resources. I want to make sure that people are aware of. Um, we have a email list um, through LSN Tap that is specific to um, AI uh, that I'm going to drop a, a link into, and we can get people added to that. Um, we are also doing another uh, full webinar on um, AI-related topics this fall. Um, I'll drop a link into the chat there and we'll have it in the about section. Uh, this whole discussion has been recorded and will be up on our YouTube channel um, as are all of our past uh, trainings. Uh, one of the things I really like about this is the best practices that are coming out of this um, so that anybody who is um, developing these types of technologies can have a leg up and learn from what is already being put into this project to use on other projects also. Um, thank you guys so much for coming out here and doing this demo for us. If there's any uh, questions, please feel free to, to drop those into the question box at this point, but we've covered so many different topics <laughs> um, at this point. It's been great. Thanks a lot, Brian. Appreciate you, man. Yes, thank you. Yeah,